All right, well, when you're writing, we definitely don't want you to get in trouble with plagiarism, so here are some tips on avoiding that. Uh, for one thing, don't copy or repeat something without citing the source. So definitely don't cut and paste, but if it's someone else's ideas, you need to credit them with those ideas. If you cite something in your reference list, uh, if you cite a reference in your text, you have to cite it in your reference list and vice versa. And of course, if you're using a direct quote, basically roughly five or more consecutive words from another source, you're going to want to go ahead and put some quotation marks around that and cite it. Again, every time you use another person's ideas, even if you're paraphrasing, you have to cite your source in the text by mentioning the author and the year. So I have a video here that, um, that explains more about that and some ideas for how to do that. Um, these are just some guidelines on how to cite various authors because sometimes things have a whole lot of authors and there are some rules uh, regarding that. But you can just, uh, I'll, I'll show you where to find that information. So you might find something like this in a text and, uh, you know, maybe you want to paraphrase it. And so I just have this up here. I'll let you look at it at your, at your leisure. But this would be an example of the original text. And then maybe in your own text, you could paraphrase it something like that. Notice that you're using your own words and you've cited uh, where you got those ideas from. Regarding APA style, uh, they have switched from 6th edition to 7th edition, so um, I will be getting something up here that kind of, there are some just minor changes to APA style from 6th to 7th edition, um, so, but most of the, the basic uh, basics of it are the same. So what is APA style? I'm so sorry that uh, throughout high school, they made you do MLA and then suddenly you get to college and everything wants to be APA. It's, I, that was not my call. Uh, but generally, APA style is used for most academic writing and for publication in many social science journals, which is one of the reasons why you see it so often. Uh, you can go to apastyle.org or to the OWL Purdue site for the most recent information on how to properly format and cite things in APA style. In general, when you're formatting, formatting a paper for APA style, you want your title page, uh, you want the, the title centered. Um, you have what's called a running head at the top. Uh, so that's just a shortened title, and I think the seventh edition you don't have to actually use the word running head, which I'm very happy about. You just have a shortened title, um, just a few words long. Margins are going to be one inch all the way around. Uh, font size, usually you can't go wrong with Times New Roman font size 12. Definitely no bigger than 12. And, uh, and line spacing is double spaced throughout. Be careful when you're formatting your paper because sometimes if you have it set to normal as opposed to no formatting, uh, it'll create like this little extra space in between paragraphs when you hit enter. So just, uh, just be aware of that, that it's truly double spaced throughout the entire paper, that there's never more than one line's worth of space between anything. So it looked kind of like this. So um, one problem that I see a lot is that people will have all sorts of extra information on here. So they'll ha and they'll put it up in the left-hand corner. Um, so they'll have their their title and their and this will all be in the left-hand corner, which is not APA style. They'll have the title and their name and HDFS 3211 and today's date and the professor's name and like all sort and a partridge in a pear tree, just all sorts of stuff along here. Um, don't do that. So for, for APA style, you'll just have uh, the shortened title up here that is called the running head. And again, I think in 7th edition, you no longer have to put the word running head here, which is nice. Uh, you'll have the title of your study, or not your study, but your paper, the title of your paper, your name first and last, and your institution. So for you, it would be University of Houston. In the body of the paper, um, and I've written it in here, notice that the running head is still up here in the corner. You'll have that on every page of your paper, and you'll have your page number in the corner. Uh, let's see. Everything is double spaced, so notice even in between paragraphs, there's still only that one space in between the paragraphs. Okay. Uh, again, when you're citing things, you'll 
use if you have a direct quote you'll put the the author the date and the page number if you're just paraphrasing you'll just have the author and the date for your references page this will be a separate page i recommend doing page breaks so that if you add something to your paper it doesn't do something weird to the formatting i think in the seventh edition references will now be bolded uh, we'll double check on that and so um, so it starts on the new page references is centered uh, your references are alphabetized by the author and you'll use what's called a hanging indent i already uploaded a video on how to do hanging indents but don't just use the tab uh, actually use the hanging indent feature that'll avoid any weirdness if you uh, when you save it some basic citations again check out the owl purdue apa website for the most current uh, guidelines regarding this, but in general, these things have stayed the same. So when you're just paraphrasing someone's thoughts, then you'll use the author and the year. So you might say, according to Smith 2014, smart goals are useful. Or um, smart, or you might just say, you might just go ahead and paraphrase and say, smart goals are useful, and then cite where you got uh, your ideas from. I have found that stylistically this sounds better. I will tell you a little story here. I was uh, at a conference with a fellow classmate and she and I were in the same class. We had we had to write two papers a week. It was brutal. But um, she was asking me, you know, hey, can I ask you a question? How are you doing on, on these papers? I said, well, I'm, do, I'm doing fine. How about you? She says, well, I keep getting the same feedback that she wants, you know, that it, you know, that she wants it more for you know for it to be my ideas and like you know for for me to be speaking that it just sounds choppy like i'm just saying this person said this this person said this and this person said that and i said well let me let me take a look at, at your paper and i noticed that uh you know she was paraphrasing which is which is good which is fine so she's paraphrasing but most of the way that she was paraphrasing was this first one right here like she would say according to so and so and then she would paraphrase I said, do the exact same thing, it's like say exactly what you were going to say, but just say it and then put the, the citation at the end. Instead of saying, according to Smith, just say what you're going to say and then credit Smith. Because that's really the only thing different um, between what she was doing and, and what I was doing. And sure enough, the, it, it came back much better. It just sounds more like you when you do it this way. So just a, a nice little tidbit there. Little little tip. Uh, with direct quotes, use the authors, the year, and the page number. Make sure that you always have that page number there. So for these, like you might, I'll just give you a second there. But look at this. Pause and see how would you would how you would cite that. So those were paraphrasings. Now let's talk about direct quotes. So if you have a direct quote like this, what would you put there? Be sure to put the author, the year, and the page number. In this case, the year goes right after the author, and then you would put the page number at the end. For long direct quotes, so 40 words or longer, you'll put those in a freestanding block of typewritten lines. You'll omit the quotation marks um, and make sure that you uh, start the quotation on the new line, indented half, in, half inch from the margin, and type the whole quotation in a large block. block. Uh, make sure, again, that you maintain that double spacing throughout, and then um, that parenthetical citation will come after the end closing punctuation mark. Again, and I'll say this again and again, if you cited it in your paper, you have to list it in your references. If it's listed in your references, you have to have it cited somewhere in your paper. This is just the anatomy of uh, an article reference, which is what is most commonly used in, um, in academic writing. And I'll let you just use these... Uh, I'll let you look at these on your on your own, but I just have these so you can kind of look at them and see what sorts of things need to change. So 
So here, for example, neuron needs to be italicized. I'm not going to spend too much time on these just because you can pause and take a look at, at these. So I have I have the I don't know why it's doing this. It should be it should be showing just this and then this, but here's what I have and then here's the the corrected one. For uh, for things like books, websites, and whatnot, you still need to cite. So um, if you go to the Owl Purdue website, it'll give you every single possible way to cite every single possible thing. And then this is something that I wanted to uh, to mention, but comma splices and run-on sentences are everywhere. And uh, my husband was an English major. God bless him. Um, so if you want to live with the grammar police, this is what it's like. But he, uh, his first semester in college, we've been, oh my gosh, we've been together since 1998. But his first semester in, uh, in college, he just got his butt handed to him on his first paper that he turned in. And uh, his problem was comma splices. He had used several comma splices. And it is a major pet peeve of a lot of professors, and especially this particular professor, who apparently would uh, knock off 10 points, 10 percentage points, so an entire letter grade for every single comma splice that she found. So he just got decimated on this paper. And that's how he learned not to do comma splices. So watch yourself on comma splices and run on sentences. You never know when your professor is going to be that professor. Uh, so there's a video here that you can watch on that. Um, also watch out for common mistakes such as your versus your, there, there, and there, it's and it's. Um, just uh, know the difference between a contraction and a possession. If, again, if you download something like Grammarly, it'll help reduce the chances of that sort of thing accidentally happening. Uh, but definitely run it past a friend uh, who tends to not make these sorts of mistakes and have them look it over for you real quick. All right, so that is that. Uh, and again, just the, the basic idea behind avoiding plagiarism is if this isn't an original idea that you had that popped into your head without any external input or guidance, then you want to give a shout out to whoever or whatever source you got that idea from. And that is just as simple as throwing that person's last name and the date of that, that reference uh, afterwards and making sure that you have the full citation uh, in the correct style in your references. It's a uh, it's really as simple as that. So just go nuts. It's better to oversight than to undersight. <laughs> um, and it's better to paraphrase than to fill your paper with a whole bunch of direct quotes, because we want to hear from you. And, uh, and with that, I will bid you adieu.